all engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey, welcome to the First Layer. My name is Richard. I'm your host here every Wednesday and live stream Saturday night. We do a show on Saturday nights called Ask for Help. This is your chance to ask us, Brian and myself, for our advice on how to fix your 3D printing issues. Everything from hardware to software and your actual 3D prints. So uh, join us every Saturday night at 7 Mountain Standard Time for Ask for Help right here on YouTube. Now, if you guys remember, we've been in a series about doing 3D printed rockets. And I've got some of the rockets that managed to make it home with us uh, from the weekend. We had a great time. We were out uh, at a undisclosed location, uh, top secret. And we were with the Airdrie S Space Science Club. I got that right, Space Science Club. And uh, Mr. Brian Jackson, who is the organizer of that club, invited us out to shoot off our 3D printed rockets to see how they would work. And uh, we're going to start. Here's a first clip. Um, not everything worked great. Not everything uh, uh, did poorly either. So here's our first launch. This was of the Alpha 3 from our good friends over at PM Hobbycraft who helped us get started with rocketry and they set us up with uh, some motors, a launcher and a whole bunch of other stuff. And we'll talk a little bit more about the launchers in just a little bit. Let's go have a look at the clip. All right, count down everybody clear. Heads up. Five, four, three, two, one. Hey, it worked. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> right, right back in my arms. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at our first launch. Didn't go bad. It came down. Actually, it came down pretty close to behind Jess. And uh, uh, she had to run and go get it. She didn't make the 300 points, but that's okay. Now, the next rocket that we set off was the Jericho missile. Now, this was one that uh, I built from scratch. So this is a my own design. Um, designed the fins. Found some reference material online. I think I got them right. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but this went up and came down. I'm going to give you a little bit of a close-up. So here you can see the Jericho. It's uh, not exactly like it was in the film, but uh, close enough for, um, you know, what I was doing. Now, I painted it in a black and yellow scheme, as you can see there, just kind of a, a rough sort of camel look. And uh, the nose cone, the fins, and the launch lug are all 3D printed. Now the launch lug itself is made from uh, black PLA. Um, this is the EcoTuff PLA from filaments.ca. Uh, the black or the nose cone and all the fins were made from ABS. Now I will say this. Now I did do a lot of infill on all the fins. These have 100% infill. Don't know if I would do that next time. The nose cone itself is also printed from ABS and the nose cone uh, actually was pretty light. Now when we did what was called the center of gravity test here in the studio before we took it out, we found out that the rocket itself was not uh, going to fly correctly unless we put some weight in the nose. And good thing the nose is quite hollow because we had to put about 40 grams worth of weight in the nose in order for this thing to fly properly. And we did that in simulation before. We used a program called RockSim um, from our good friends over at Apogee Rockets. Uh, they have a free trial download and uh, we got a hold of that and we really had a good time. It also helped me to decide how I was going to put this together. Um, so I did a little bit of research, not a whole lot. Let's see how the Jericho missile flew and uh, you guys will hopefully you like it. Five, four, three, two, one.
Now the Jericho missile, of course, we couldn't fly it on our own uh, units here because what had happened was this 3D printed unit, although it looks great, it lights up, it's all pretty and such, we found out that it wasn't delivering enough current down the wire that we had put onto it to launch the actual missiles uh, or launch the rockets, not the missiles, the rockets. And so we had to go with a different launch system. Now we did use the Estes launch system, uh, which came with the uh, first rocket that you saw. This uh, launcher actually uses four AA batteries. It worked out really well. We were pretty close uh, to the rocket when we set it off. We were only about 10, maybe 15 feet away. And uh, this worked extremely well. The problem was that we couldn't get far enough back uh, into the safety zone that we should have been in. Uh, so we only used this once. Good thing that uh, Garth, who is a senior member of the Airdrie Space Science Club uh, out in Airdrie, um, was on hand and he was launching some of his larger rockets, what they call a mid-power rocket. Let's take a look at some of his rockets and an interview that we did with him. I am now here with Garth from the Airdrie Space Scientific Club. Yes. I got that right. Close enough. Okay. Garth, tell me a little bit about the club. Well, the Airdrie Space Science Club was formed about 10 years ago by a teacher Mr. Brian Jackson in Airdrie, and he uh, he does uh, annual units in space and rocketry with his grade six students. So this is an add-on. Uh, there's a bunch of us in Calgary, senior members of the Canadian Association of Rocketry, that have been doing this for many decades. And uh, we hooked up with Brian. Uh, he had the launch site, and he also had the students that we could mentor. And it's been going strong, as I said, for ten years now. So. And how often do you guys get out to launch? We try to get out uh, monthly from April through to the end of uh, October or early November, depending on whether we uh, have good weather conditions. How much snow is on the ground? Uh, <laughs> how cold it is, how wind. Wind is mostly the uh, thing that stops us the most. Gotcha. Uh, we can fly up to 20 kilometer an hour wind, but uh, we like it as today where it was perfect. Perfect. It was good today. Yes, it was perfect. Now, you were setting off what we call mid-power rockets. Correct. Tell us a little bit about what is involved in a mid-power rocket over the junk that we were setting off this well, morning. Well, the stuff you guys were doing was quite unique because it's all 3D printed, so that is that is unique and that's new to the hobby. Uh, the hobby's been going for 60 years now and it started out with uh, balsa and paper tubes and pre-manufactured motors. And as it has evolved over the decades, uh, new technologies come in, electronics come in, cameras come in, and now 3D printing. Uh, so mid-power is basically the similar technology. Uh, the models I had today are still cardboard with plastic and plywood fins, uh, but the motors themselves are much more powerful than what the models that the children fly. Uh, they go up uh, with each letter designation, it doubles in power. So today I was flying D, E, F, and G motors. Mm -hmm. Uh, the G motor is essentially uh, 12 times the power that you were flying on your seas. Right. So I can fly a much larger, heavier rocket to a higher altitude than what you can. And the other thing with the composite motors is it's the same propellant as the space shuttle solid rocket. Oh wow! It's identical in formulation. Uh, we can tweak it a little bit to give special effects. As you saw, one today had black smoke. Some of them were white smoke. Some were clear. Uh, now, is there any special certifications you need to fly mid-power For mid-power, no, but you do need to have a good, a large launch site. Uh, yeah. Model rockets are not, uh, you can't fly them in any of the cities, so they all have bylaws. Uh, because uh, Brian uh, has worked so well with the city of Airdrie, we are actually the only club that has got the legal right to fly there. All of our members are insured, and uh, we met our members of the Canadian Association or the National Association of Rocketry, and we have a safety code we follow. And uh, anyone else really can't uh, fly alone. They have to come fly with us gotcha. or join our club and, and become a member. So how does somebody become a member of the club? Uh, get a hold of Mr. Brian Jackson in Airdrie. We do have a Facebook site, uh, the Airdrie Space Science Club, so you can go there. And I guess that's really how you get a hold of us. Or you can get a hold of the Canadian Association of Rocketry uh, just by Googling them. 
and they can direct you our way as well. Well, I can tell you, you've been our mentor today and our hero to help us get things launched because both of our launchers failed <laughs> spectacularly. Um, we have some re-engineering to do, obviously. Thanks again. You're Thanks welcome. for coming out. And we're, we had a great time. Yes, we did. Man, I really enjoyed hanging out with Garth and the rest of the gang that, that showed up to fly some rockets. Now, our two rockets that we had, the... PLA version, which was done out of black uh, PLA, the EcoTuff PLA from filaments.ca. Um, it flew beautifully. Uh, it popped its chute. It came down nicely. We gave that one away to one of the kids, but let's have a look at the launch of both that one and our uh, one that we did out of PETG, which was just some leftover green that I had. I believe that came from spool.ca. Spool3D.ca, I'm sorry. So let's go and have a look at those two and look at the carnage, or lack thereof, of those two rockets. In five, four, three, two, one. So this was the PLA, and surprisingly enough, it didn't deform. So we might actually get another flight out of this. Parachute held on. Didn't open completely, but it held on. Let's try it again. All right, so we're launching a PETG 3D printed rocket on a C63. This could be spectacular. Um, could not be spectacular. It could be a dud. And skies are clear. All clear on the ground. In five, four, three, two. One. All right, it went up nice and straight. It came down all in one piece. It opened, shoot opened, it landed okay, and it survived. A little bit of deformation, but nothing serious. We can fly this one again. Well, you can see that they didn't come out too badly. So, those two rockets survived. We gave those away to some of the younger kids that were there, so now they've got some mementos to take home. Um, we were at a secret location. We can't tell you where we were because it is on private land. Uh, thank you to Brian Jackson, who is the organizer and founder of the Airdrie Space Science Club, uh, for allowing us to come out and launch rockets on uh, on his at this location that he had picked for us. Um, now, this next rocket is Brian's rocket. What can I say about Brian's rocket? Well, Brian's rocket did fly. It was a cluster, and what we mean by a cluster is we're using three motors. Um, and three igniters to set those motors off. Let's have a look at the launch and then we'll take a look at some of the pictures of the carnage. Launching in five, four, three, two, one. Oh, Holy crap. Well, it's sort of straight. Well, kind of. And boom. Lawn dark. <laughs> So while his rocket got off the launch pad, it didn't do very well in terms of coming down. Uh, it did not pop its parachute, uh, but it did blow an engine out. And we'll have a look at some of the pictures here. You can see the carnage. It just ripped through the thin walls of his uh, 3D print. Hey, it went up. That's all that matters. It came down. It was a lawn dart, but at the end of the day, Brian did a fantastic job of creating a rocket for our event. And lastly, we set off some of the other rockets. But before we do that, um, we talked to another individual. Doug is a avid 3D printer as well as an avid rocketeer. And uh, he's combined the hobby just like we did. And here is my interview with Doug talking a little bit about uh, how the hobby has changed a little bit in terms of 3D printing for Rocketeers. I'm with Doug. 
Doug does 3D printing and does rocketry as well. So tell me a little bit about your experiences with 3D printing and rocket. Yeah, it's really neat, Richard. I um, got into 3D printing about uh, two and a half years ago. And uh, of course, I've been into rocketry. Um, like you, I did it as a kid and, right. and then kind of got out of it. And then my kids got into it. So, so I'm, I'm all over it again. <laughs> and uh, so got this 3D printer and, and then started looking at different models that you can get and um, found a lot on Thingiverse and, um, and other sites and, and started printing them. So um, it's a very versatile way of building that, you know, instead of having to build with balsa and cardboard and paper and glue and everything, you just print your model and, and sand it and paint it and paint it to not not even paint it because your color is already there there you go and uh, and launch so and then if something breaks you just print, print another it, one print another one and, <laughs> uh, I've had some pretty sp spectacular explosions and and uh, you know rockets that have bombarded and break and and you just print them again and Way you go. Now, what's your favorite material to print with when you're doing rockets? Um, so I print a lot of the tubes in PLA. Um, anything that's around the motor, I print in PETG, okay. um, just for the heat resistance. And so you're using multi-material. Um, well, I do some assemblies. So, right. like, there, you know, the body tube would be printed, and then the the motor rings would be printed separate and epoxy them into place. And now, you you've seen our spectacular fails and, and some successes. What do you think of the rockets that we printed out here? Yeah, they're today? pretty they're pretty cool. It's uh, like the sky's really the limit with there you go. making 3D rockets. Any design that you can think of, you can make it and print it and test it. And um, you know, you gotta, like you said, learning mm -hmm. about all the center of pressure and center of gravity and how much weight do you need in the nose cone you and, bet. and all that. So it's it's lots of fun. It has been a lot of fun. In five, four, three. Two, one. All right, Ellie's setting off the bullpup with a C63. All clear. In five, four, three, two, one. Missile. I don't know about you, but I had a great time. I did too, absolutely. Well, we've got a few people to thank. First and foremost, we want to thank the Airdrie Space Science Club. who we allowed call us them ASSC. ASSC. <laughs> they allowed us to fly out here at this top secret location. It's not near a city, as you can tell, so obey the rules. <laughs> exactly, obey the rules. Secondly, we have to thank PM Hobbycraft for allowing us to have camera or uh, rockets to fly thank in you. case our 3D printed ones failed. So if you're for in, when, for when our printer, <laughs> for, for when, when they, they failed. <laughs> so go check out PM Hobbycraft or pmhobbycraft.ca. You can check them out in Calgary. They've got all your rocketry needs. So go check them out today. We want to thank Solar Botics for helping us out with our electronics and getting everything set up and some of the material that we used in the rockets. And they did not supply us the design, so don't blame them for that. That's yeah. on us. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> Uh, we also want to thank filaments.ca for supplying some of the filament for our rockets as well. I don't think I even covered it. My rocket was filament.ca's Galaxy Red PLA, which I don't even know if you can get anymore, but it's a it's a very nice color. I've been stocking up on this stuff lately. So for round two, maybe we'll go for something a little bigger. There you go. <laughs> so with that said, we want to thank you guys for joining us on this adventure today. And remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print.